Okay, this is the yeah, 754 and yes, we're back with Duke Nukem Double Meltdown TC for the one last time with commentary. And yeah, uh, it is episode 4 level 6, Ministry of Fear, the last level of Duke Nukem Total Meltdown. So what is Ministry of Fear exactly? It is basically a nightclub, quickly open up the door and... Yeah, <laughs> that's the best way to save that. Uh, I think that should be everything. And yeah, here we do have some uh, random... I don't know what these guys are doing. <laughs> yeah, maybe they're just, you know, queuing up or something. And you can probably notice uh, the cool thing about this map is that the music seems to be a little bit fuzzy at this point. And for some reason my frame rate likes going all over the place. I hope that's only temporary. Oh jeez. Yeah, you guys are... Reckless. And yeah, the music gets a little bit louder. And yeah, this is indeed a nightclub. So that's what uh, that's where this map get, gets its name from. Gotta be careful because we got some commanders. Uh, this area in particular has uh, plenty of commanders. I think this area actually has like four commanders. Yeah. But yeah, Shrinker comes handy. And yeah, now the music uh, reaches is reaches its highest quality. <laughs> so we're kind of like in the uh, sorry DJs. Uh, and yeah, we do have the uh, new pickup. One last pickup variant. Uh, I think that uh, those guys actually do heap fire their uh, shotguns and stuff. So we can also take this way but at the same time we can actually come from that door. But uh, I'll show that later on. Yeah. And those guys, uh, I don't know what those pickups are called, but they, they, they have sunglasses and this, I would say a little bit Elvis-like hair. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little bit funny. And here we do have a uh, secret number two. And those guys actually didn't make a dying sound uh, in the original game. So, and this will take us to the. Uh, to this area, so as soon as you walk over here we do get a horde of enforcers as usual, but thank... probably not, but yeah, um, this is fortunately the last time we have to deal with any enforcers in this game, thank goodness, this uh, hit scanner, hit scanner spamming finally comes to an end. And yeah, here we do have that uh, pickup variant I was talking about. They do fire like normal pickups do. But yeah, they actually do hip fire. And also, uh, when they drop a shotgun, they give you actually 10 shotgun rounds. Instead of normal, like, uh, 1 to 4 logic. And here we do have some racing games. Uh, removed for legal reasons. And of course we do have Duke Nukem 3D also here. <laughs> Why not? <clears throat> and fighting games and some other stuff. But a uh, funny thing, actually, um, when you think about uh, <laughs> legal reasons, uh, I believe that uh, uh, Duke Nukem, uh, let me think, it was that uh, Megaton edition was actually removed for legal reasons. Uh, 
for a short period of uh, short period of time. Uh, I think it was yeah, Steve, yeah, because I bought the game before it was removed for legal reasons. Uh, I think it was taken down for legal legal reasons, whatever reasons from Steam. But now it now it has been taken out uh, completely from Steam for other reasons. <laughs> so maybe they were uh, you know doing a little bit of a fortune telling, I guess. But yeah, uh, to get the fourth secret, uh, you must walk over there. So you can kind of like see this little bit of a highlighted sector. Throw a pipe bomb in there. Uh, let's throw another one. Because... Uh... God! Yeah, tell me about it. Okay, that's everything. Yeah, because uh, there are sentry drones in here, so that's that's <laughs> that's that's just like a really a questionable sentry drone placement. But then again, you know, this is plug and pray, so I'm not really surprised. And here we do get the duo, commander duo. So, but yeah, this area has plenty of uh, enforcers, so. Stop bouncing around, you stupid idiot. And I think there's... Yeah. Enforcers, but I think there's actually a spawning point. Which actually triggers more spawning enforcers and stuff, so... God damn it, I, I, I really hate these guys. I, I really do. But fortunately, I do have plenty of ammo, and, you know... I can do whatever I want. Yeah, there you go. Uh, this area actually has one secret, but it requires the activation of the yellow door. And here we do have this little door. Kind of trivial because it's not even a secret and, you know... And, uh... I think that door actually didn't make any sound in the original game, if I remember correctly. Lucky me. <laughs> but yeah, um, you don't want to go there because uh, even it looks that there could be a secret, but there actually aren't secrets, which I think is a little bit surprising. Because you would kind of like expect that there would be a secret, but no. But instead, we do have a sec one secret over here, and there's a trip mine, so take care of it. And here we do have a shrinker in case you missed it. And here we do have the yellow door. <clears throat> and to uh, trigger the boss fight Walk over here, but we are all but done. Uh, so we, we still have two secrets to find <clears throat> And uh, yeah, <clears throat> I'm probably gonna do a little bit of a sweep through the map Because uh, we also do need this which is uh, secret number six And here we have some laser trim bombs if we need them. Most likely I probably won't be using them. Using them, but here we do have the red door. And in order to get the seventh secret of the map, this one, you must use the uh, red key. Because this won't open otherwise. It won't. It will be unlocked only when uh, you have used the red key, so... Now we do have everything. So let's check out the ammo situation, fairly good. And I don't think this area had anything... Oh yeah, actually there could be an RPG here. Yeah. But as long as we have the uh, all of the explosives, I'm pretty happy. So, yeah. <clears throat> I think we're ready to go. And one last, the one last secret is actually around this area. But it has... Um, come down to this. We're not facing any one-eyed freaks. We're facing a uh, cyber thief. Not no, not the cyber demon, cyber demon from Doom. But 
the Cyber Keef is uh, apparently, uh, from what I've read about him, is that he is a, a, a robot constructed by aliens to destroy Duke Nuke. Hmm. So, apart from that, it's not. Um, because Black and Prey doesn't really have any story around it, so it's it's very very difficult to know uh, things about Cyber Keef and stuff. And to trigger the boss fight, walk over here, stay over here, wait till those explosions do their thing, wake him up. Yeah, there he is. And now we're gonna make a really quick run to run for the city and uh, I think we do have top, uh, two assault commanders here so let's deal with them really quickly uh, then you must go over here for the one last secret blow up that one to get this and now we do have all the secrets and all we have to deal with is a couple of sentry drones and uh, the cyber keys himself let's go over here here and watch a beautiful explosion and this is where the cyber Keef must have been, you know, wrecking the city and, and you know, doing his thing. Uh, he's out there somewhere right now. Uh, I want to keep an eye on him because... Yeah, there he is. Uh, because... And yeah, he uses the same sounds uh, as uh, the battle. Which perhaps tells us something about um, the quality of work that, you know, the devs of this port have done. And when you look at his uh, frames, oh god. Jesus Christ, he's fast. Okay, I, I gotta deal with those sandra drones really quickly. Oh yeah, I don't I don't care if you guys crash into me. Yeah. Yeah, there's one last center wrong, please. Yeah, thanks. And yeah, there's that cyber keef. Oh jeez. Okay, that was way too close. Way too close. Way too close. Jesus Christ. Um Okay, so let's get our Devastator going. Uh, that was a little bit... Jesus Christ, he does so much damage in this one. I, I don't know what that, is, what that thing is. But yeah, he has basically the same attacks as the Battle Lord. Same sounds as Battle Lord, so he's a lazy Battle Lord re replacement and stuff. And he takes a lot of punishment. Well, and when you look at his frames, <laughs> you you just, um, I can't really help of not feeling, I, I just feel sorry for the, you know, the guys who, you know, yeah, and he's done. Yeah, piece of... Some. Yeah, that's how we take care of uh, the Cyber Keef, and that's how also Plucket Prey comes to an end. And with it, this 
Let's play as Duke Nukem Total Meltdown TC. But first, uh, I'm going to summarize uh, Ministry of Fear. Ministry of Fear, I, I think it's uh, it's an okay map, I, I think. And what actually makes this map uh, perhaps uh, the most interesting one is, or at least the uh, uh, what I mean to say is that what actually carries this map is the lighting uh, or the cycler effects because this map uses like I, I didn't really mention those cycler effects but this map actually uses plenty of cyclers and really cool cycler effects indeed so those those are actually pretty nicely done but you know apart from that uh, it's a pretty much a standard plug and pray map plenty of commanders and the uh, uh, thank goodness we're finally done with <laughs> all the annoying enforcers that we have to deal with it, deal with uh, in episode four and stuff like that. Thank goodness we have we no longer have to deal with them. But also those you know new pickup variants were there, so they can actually deal some damage to you and. If I remember correctly, when they do that heap fire attack, they might do a little bit more damage to you than they would do normally. <clears throat> I mean, uh, with with a normal pickup uh, attack, I think. I'm not sure on this, but sometimes it, it it feels that they're doing a little bit more damage. But um, but yeah, Ministry of Fear. It's uh, it's an okay map still. It's, it's it's fairly enjoyable, definitely much more in, enjoyable than the previous map. Faces of Death, which was a little bit more generic, uh, very... It, it wasn't really an original map, like, for example, Ministry of Fear is. And also the cool thing about this map is that the music kind of, you know, goes quiet and... The music kind of goes quiet and it plays a little bit of a, that random story thing in this map <laughs> which is a little bit funny in a way but it completely suits this map to have that music go a little bit quiet when you're actually far away from the you know the nightclub and stuff so that's pretty nice and but it's a, it's a fairly easy map <clears throat> uh, because obviously when you come come to this map and when you enter this map, you have plenty of ammo, plenty of explosives, nothing really to worry about, so all you need is just a bunch of explosives and, you know, you're all done. But now we would be moving on to this game itself. Duke Nukem Total Meltdown as a, as a whole, I think, uh, even it has, uh, I would say, mostly um, questionable reputation. The original game would have a really a questionable reputation among gamers uh, because uh, of those poor, uh, you know, controls and bad frame rate things and things like that that make this experience and made this experience really uh, painful for a lot of people back in, back in the old days around 1997 or 1990 or in the late 90, 90s anyway and uh, with this mod uh, Duke Nukem Total Meltdown TC it's none of those issues exist anymore so you can kind of like you know exper experience plug and pray the way it was without all those issues that were uh, a little bit of a burden for Duke Nukem Total Meltdown and to be honest, if I did uh, actually a walkthrough of the clan, let's let's think that I would have to do a, a walkthrough of Duke Nukem Total Meltdown, the very original game. I still would think twice before doing it because of the very reasons that I mentioned: poor controls, poor frame rate, things like that. It's 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 something that I I would definitely you know give a little bit more of a thought. Uh, before doing that. But I would say that um, also we do have a new boss in Plug and Prey which is uh, which is the Cyber Keef. 
and uh, I was kind of, you know, interrupted by that uh, sudden ending. <clears throat> but yeah, Cyber Keef, uh, not an, there is not really an awful lot of information about him to be found. So it is, it's a, it's a little bit of a mystery who he really is, apart from the, you know, the, you know, this very, very brief article in, uh, I think it's actually on Duke Wiki, I believe. Maybe Duke Wiki. Yeah, Duke Wiki. So it's, it's not really, uh, because the manual doesn't obviously say anything about, uh, you know, Duke Nukem Total Meltdown. I mean, uh, cyber, cyber Keef, and the, you know, the manual of Duke Nukem Total Meltdown doesn't really say anything about the Cyber Keef. But, you know, when you actually look at him as a boss, I think he could have been a much more interesting boss. And when, when you look at his frames, he's like, he's literally like, he, he has really bad frames, bad animations, uh, you know. Not to mention that, you know, even the dev team, they weren't like, you know, recording new sounds for him and, you know, things like that. Instead, they used the base game sounds and, you know, they made a, an okay soundtrack for this game, but couldn't, you know, grab a couple of new sound effects for the boss. And they just could have maybe, you know, added completely different attacks to him and, you know, make him a little, a very unique boss. But instead he turns out to be this lazy, uh, you know, battle lord replacement with basically the same coding as the battle lord and, you know, the only difference is that he's visually different from a battle lord, but technically speaking, he is a battle lord, which is really a, it's, it's a huge disappointment in 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 that sense. <clears throat> but when you start talk, uh, talking about plug and uh, plug and pray as a whole and put it into <clears throat> into a context and kind of like. Um, Thinking about when you start thinking about this episode among the other Duke Duke Nukem 3D official episodes, um, I would say that um, objectively speaking, uh, I'd say that Plug and Pray falls 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 behind the other episodes, other Duke 3D episodes by far. And in, because in my opinion, like Plug and Pray, uh, in my opinion, these cheap shot things are very, very common in this episode. Which means that there, there are just like almost every map has like these cheap shot things. Like, you know, these kind of, you know, things that you, these all, all you know, things that, you know, all of a sudden there something happens in, in the map and then you're like all confused and if you're playing it for the first time then you get killed and you get frustrated and things like that. So for example, this episode has plenty of them. Tons of these, you know, things that annoy you and, you know, are just to make, just to make the player really annoyed and things like that. That's, in my opinion, one of the greatest reasons why Pluck and Prey also falls behind uh, the other episodes, not to mention that the quality of the design is not necessarily, you know, living up to the other episodes. And one little factor that I notice about Plug and Pray in, specific, in, in particular is the fact that I could not find a single sloped shadow from this episode. That tells you a lot. And, and not to mention that, you know, those the shading in this episode, it ranges. It ranges quite a lot, you know. In, in some maps you have like okay shadows and, you know, some maps don't have any shadows and, you know, it's it, it ranges like all over the place. It's like the, the quality of the design is all over the place. But I would have to say that perhaps the, I would say Gates Motel, it's probably the most decent map uh, when you put on uh, the when I put on my review glasses I guess Gates Motel is probably you know the most decent decent map in this episode Duke Royale it's kind of okay map but it suffers from 
uh, this uh, bad, bad other, otherwise bad design choices uh, and things like that. Alien Rendezvous, it's just a high difficulty map with uh, below average design and you know bad gameplay decisions, bad gameplay design, things like that. So yeah, uh, Nightmare Zone of really really rough opener for the episode trial and error map very very annoying map in my opinion trackside tragedy it's a it's an it's a very unique map and i i think that's also the kind of map that i like trackside tragedy is it's an okay map even like the design as a whole is not very strong um but it's it's an okay map and you know, Faces of Death. It's the you know mandatory you know ripoff map from uh, 3D Realms. 3D Realms ripoff map. Uh, nothing really interesting in it. You know, seven mini battle lords. Uh, you know, and they added a nuke button and a trip mine. No big deal. But yeah. And Minister of Fear. It's a it's it's an okay map. But it's it's still. In my opinion, it's like some of the uh, design choices in in majority of these maps, um, in case of Pluck and Prey, are, in my opinion, a little bit questionable. Because the thing is that um, it is just, uh, um, for example, uh, the secrets. The secrets are just so weird in like some of these maps. For example, they're just like out of doom and you know, you just don't expect stuff like that in Duke Nukem 3D and the secret language in Pluck and Prey it's completely different from from any other episodes. Not that it's uh, necessarily a bad thing as a, as as a whole, but the thing is that it it differentiates uh, from the base game in in such a way that it's it, it kind of like, it turns into this more of a negative burden than an actual strength with this episode. And not to mention that some of the design choices are, and some of these maps feel a little bit rushed, particularly like the two last maps. Uh, I mean, last the last three maps, actually. You know, up to Duke Royale, I think the deep, you know, design is okay, but then, you know, maps like, let's say, Alien Rendezvous, completely rushed map, uh, Faces of Death, uh, you know, a lame rip-off map, and then, uh, then, you know, Ministry of Fear. The cycle effects are pretty decent in this one, but it still feels a little bit, like, rushed when it comes to, like, some of the areas look very, very simplistic and stuff like that, but... I would say that, you know, as a whole, Pluck and Prey, uh, it's not probably the most strongest official Duke Nukem 3D episode. In my opinion, it would be... When I put on my review glasses, I would say that it's probably the weakest of the, of, uh, of the official episodes of Duke Nukem 3D. <clears throat> but yeah, um, it's, been a, it's been a long, long LP for me to do. And there will be one more video for me to do, or uh, to upload, actually. I have already recorded that video, which would be episode one, <laughs> damn it, episode three, level 11, Freeway, with all the secrets and all the kills. Because I missed that, you know, uh, fallen building secret. Well, it wasn't really a secret, but I missed it anyway. So I missed two kills. Even the game told me that, you know, there were still kills that, that I didn't really miss anything. But I knew that I missed things, so all I need to do is upload that, and this LP comes to comes to an end. But it's been a fun LP to do, and I've been, you know, specifically targeting the the people who have been who have been playing the original game, and you know, who have probably, you know, played Pluck and Prey, and you know, and also the. Some of the technical things uh, I, I try to because I've been playing Duke Nukem 3D for for pretty pretty long pretty long time, and uh, I try to you know put all my knowledge into into use while you know making this LP and recording all of these things, 
and uh, but in particular, I I tried to you know <clears throat> I tried to uh, reach out to those people who have actually played the original game, experienced the original game uh, the way it was with bad controls and everything and and stuff like that and you know share a couple of funny stories in between and stuff like that and it's been a huge nostalgia trip for me to do this it, it brought me a lot of memories and, and things like that so but as they say all good things come to an end and so we have reached the um, end of Duke Nukem Total Meltdown TC and I truly hope that, you know, those who have been following following this LP, I truly hope that uh, you guys have enjoyed it. And uh, if you want to experience this thing, you can always download the mod. It's no big deal. And you can probably experience the nostalgia trip of your own. So, why not? But there will be still Duke Nukem 3D content on my channel, probably some user maps, and I was kind of wondering that I probably want to do a re-coverage of Duke Nukem 64 at some point with commentary, because I have already done Duke Nukem 64, but I haven't done that with commentary, but so... I might do that in the future, in the future but in the meanwhile, you know, I have plenty of user maps <clears throat> covered on my channel so and I will probably continue to cover some user maps some of them with commentary and some of them without so but yeah this has been the let's play of Duke Nukem Tall Meltdown TC so I hope you have enjoyed this very very long and uh, rewarding journey with me so yeah I hope you have enjoyed this so yeah thanks for watching and see you around